need to do first is say welcome, please do grab your seat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning everyone. If you can just um start taking your seat, that would be great. We're just gonna start um in a minute. So so yeah. Okay, good morning everyone. I am Josh, for those that don't know me. Um, I am the pioneering youth worker um, at, at St. Mark's. It's lovely to um, be with you this morning. Um, and this is... I'm Dan. I'm, I'm the vicar of St. Mark's. I don't know if I'm coming through, but it's, uh, it's lovely to see you. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, what, a, what a weekend it's been. Josh, what have you been up to this weekend? Lots of things, but really exciting was that last night we had our um, cafe quiz and carol night that was a really great i recognize some of you came last night can we see that on the screen carol we should have a lovely picture carol? of the uh, no. should have a lovely picture there, there we go there's about 70 people last night which was amazing i think nine teams um and there was a there was a good split between church family church community and then also community outside of church that maybe don't always haven't engaged before or have, have been to odd events so it was really really great to see unfortunately my team didn't win but <laughs> it is what it is um, and this morning is our all together service so once a month each um each first sunday of the month we have our all together service so it's a chance for the whole church to come together and to celebrate God with us and, and dive deeper into um, certain topics that are suitable for everyone. So that's this morning. And then finally, this morning, you might notice here we've got our wonderful Christmas tree um, and under it is lots of toys um, that we've got. And that's all because this, this morning is Toy Sunday. So we collect ch um, toys as a church. Um, Will and Linda do um, an amazing job collecting um, toys and, and organizing everything and they're going to local schools um, to Grange Valley and Lee Vale as well um, and that will really bless young people so thank you for everyone that's brought toys this morning um, and I thank you everyone that's been praying for that as well that's that's absolutely amazing um, thank you Josh as we as we give these presents to the school please do pray for each child who receives one they go into the children who are most um, uh, unlikely to have um, many gifts and it's a, it's, it's a wonderful thing to receive something from your local church um, just to say, you know, we love you too. Um, last All Together was a particularly lively one and um, we've taken lots of feedback. I just want you to know we have thought this through. We've worked out a few things. We've reinstated the bigger space at the front so when the kids come up, there's space for them. Um, uh, some people asked, could we have the baby jail back? That would be really helpful. Not be Sorry, that's what it was affectionately known as. The baby, the space for little ones who like to crawl and like to escape. Um, so when I arrived, I was talking about this baby jail. I was thinking, what is that? What is it? It's an affectionately, affectionate name for a space just to keep the children together if they're um, particularly running around. If, um, if, you've, uh, if you've got children this morning, um, children are always, always welcome at St. Mark's. Um, and something I'll be sharing at every service, first of the month, um, will be the, the, best the best way we can worship together um, is for children to feel at home, which means if they're wandering around murmuring completely fine, if they're running laps of the building or climbing the, climbing the structures or just causing disruption, we have a brilliant breakout space for those exact moments. Um, and so we've got, the, uh, we've got some, some toys in the back. Everything's being piped through so you'll be able to see and hear everything that we're saying in the service in that space. Um, and just while we don't have a baptism here, I just want to say to church family, um, there are three Bs that we look for when people come to church for the first time. Firstly, we pray they encounter Jesus and start to belong. And then we pray that they'll believe in Jesus Christ. And thirdly and finally, we, are, we hope that they will catch the culture of the church and start to behave as we'd like them to. So it's a bit of a challenge to us. When we have people in the church who aren't used to church, let's be as welcoming as possible. And I hope just a gentle notice at the beginning, like the one you've just heard, can just help us all have a really good worshipful experience, whatever age we're at and whatever stage we're at. Wonderful, thank you. Now, those that haven't been before, um, this church loves a good notice, and Dan <laughs> loves a good notice especially. So we're gonna, I'm going to time Dan. He's got three minutes, 
hopefully to get through all of the notice. There's a lots of things coming up um, for Christmas. So, and I'll have a word with him later if it goes over. So That's I'm going to get my phone out to time him now. Three, two, one. Amazing. Go. I don't think you'll be the only one who uh, calls me off on it. So um, we have uh, Avril is going to be leading um, with John Robinson an Advent meditation this week, um, 11 o'clock in the community garden on Tuesday. So if you're around, please do go. Um, I w just before, the, I think we had some last year as well and before the pandemic, beautiful reflection services. So this is gonna be brilliant, um, 11 o'clock this Tuesday. Um, next week, oh, no, on this Tuesday in the evening, we have the final choir practice, I'll be there. Um, so uh, it would be wonderful to see um, a, a few more join in the choir so that we can have a beautiful sound as they're adding to the beautiful sound they've already created. For next week's Carols by Candlelight, which leads us to our next one. Um, Carols by Candlelight is next Sunday. Oh, before it, before that. <laughs> We've got the Christmas wrapping event. This is a great outreach mission event. It's one of the three big community outreach events. So we're going to put cha uh, tables in the middle, chairs round. We need some wrappers. So if you're a wrapper, if you're up for wrapping Christmas presents, and I've been wrapping presents for the PCC, and they do not look good, don't get me wrapping your presents, so I won't be. But if you're a good wrapper, we would love you to come um, between uh, 11 o'clock and 2 p.m. If you can get here a bit earlier, that's fantastic. To wrap presents, we're going to have a movie corner. We're going to have a FIFA corner, we've got a selfie nativity corner, we've got Father Christmas right here giving the good news um, to people. We've got a treasure map, which if your children haven't had the treasure map, um, let me just grab my one, I don't have one, that's fine. Um, you can grab them on the on the on your way out. Take them, have a look around, try and find the advent windows around the local area. Um, how am I doing for time? Carols by Candlelight is next week at 6.30 p.m. Uh, it's going to be beautiful. We're going to have, Sylvia is going to dress all the windows with, um, uh, with candles and with foliage, and it's going to look absolutely beautiful. So do come to that 6.30 next week. Pop-up nativity service is two weeks' time. Uh, really excited about that. And we're asking you, think about your costume now. Even if you don't like costumes, you can just wear a hat for us or something like that. That would be amazing. Someone from the nativity story, come and be a part of it, 10 o'clock on the 20... On the 18th, sorry. Um, and finally, I just want to tell you about the Darkest Night service at 6... Oh, favourite carols, 2pm. That's going to be brilliant as well. Um, Darkest Night is the next one, please, Carol. Um, and that's for those particularly who are feeling down this Christmas. Christmas is going to look very different. They don't want the festivities. Or maybe they just want a space to reflect and um, to be quiet. That is the service for you and for them. So please do invite your friends who are really struggling at this point... Um, it's a great offering in amongst the, mid, the, the, um, the program of events. If you want to know about the other ones, just go to the Christmas card. Thank you so much that we've had the best response to giving out the Christmas cards this year um, that we've ever had, apparently. So thank you if you took Christmas cards out. You're amazing. It went over about 20 seconds, <sighs> just to let you all know. F thank you, Dan, for, for doing that. <laughs> so now it's our time in the service. Um, that we're going to light our Advent candle. So leading up to Christmas, we um, are going to light an Advent candle each week. Um, so can we have a volunteer um, that wants to come? So Josh, do you want to come come up? Um, and we, we've got something to say um, all together. So I'll lead us in that. And then hopefully it will be on the screen. If not, great. People of God, be glad. Your God delights in you giving you joy for sadness and turning the dark to light. Be strong in hope, therefore, for your God comes to save. You are God's children. The Lord God gives one and love Christ today, today and, and forever. forever. Amen. 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 Great. Thank you, Josh. We're going to have our um, first worship song now. Um, so, first three. Oh, for first three worship songs. Amazing. Indeed. So we're going to stand together. This song has got actions, if you know them. I would usually be doing, but I'm standing behind the guitar today. So um, <coughs> faith as small as a mustard seed. We've done it for years. A lot of you know the actions. I'll be looking. All right.
Wonderful. And please take a seat. So this is a part now where I'm expecting the congregation to answer some really easy and tricky questions. Okay, so we're going to do a quiz as part of the game um, this morning. Um, so hopefully, I was looking at the screen there. There's no screen there. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a screen up here, so hopefully you'll be able to see some of the questions. So if you know the answer, put your hand up and I'll point to you. Okay, I'm expecting five out of five. Come on, we can do this. Who was it that Jesus asked on the boat to stand on the water with him? Peter, who was it? Peter. Good person to answer that question. I like it. Good. Hopefully we've got some like other names. Who heard from God that Barak should take 10,000 men to Mount Tabor? Mm. Is it Ruth, Mary, Deborah, or Naomi? Yasmina? Who? Correct. Round of applause. For Deborah. Deborah, just to, just to clarify. And for Peter as well. Next question, please. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den because he prayed to God. True or false? Harriet. True. Round of applause. Right, three, three, four for four. So four. Oh, no, sorry. I, three for three. How many sons did God's faithful servant Job have? Tricky one. Was it three, two, one, or six, Josh? No. Anyone? No. One. One. There you go. There you go. Next question, please. Who led the Israelites out of Egypt through having faith in God? Easy one here. Anyone that hasn't answered yet? Yeah. Who was it? Moses. Round of applause. Round of applause. Last question. Oh no, I think that's it. That just went so fast. What can I, was, I was expecting um, there to be other questions. Round of applause for everyone that's done that. Good, good answers, good answers. So now we have got um, someone that is going to come and do our Bible reading for us. So Harriet, do you want to come up? The reading is taken from Luke 1, 5 to 24. In the time of Herod, king of Judah, the, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also descendant of Aaron. Both of them were riches in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But there were, they were childless, because Elizabeth was not able to conceive. They were both very old. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty, he was serving the place before God. He was chosen by a lot, according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and custom of the priests burn incense and when the time for the burning of incense came all the assembled worshippers were praying outside then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of the incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you and may reduce, will rejoice because of his birth. 
for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and take disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. Now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this, this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at the appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. And they realized he had seen a, a vision in the temple for he kept making signs to them but remained unable to speak. When the, his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months, remained in solution. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. This is the word of the Lord. A big well done to Harriet, because that was a long, long Bible reading, and it's very scary, uh, um, especially when you've not done it before, so well done to Harriet. We're going to watch a video now, um, um, linking on from, from that and the story of Zachariah and, and everything that we've just heard Harriet say. So we're going to watch a video now, and then Dan will come and dive. Yeah, there you go. The number which we have all selected is 43. And remember, whoever is chosen for the honor of giving the incense offering will enjoy the blessing of heaven the rest of his life. Now, all raise a finger. One, two, 16, three, 17, 26, 18, 27, 41, 42, 43. Zechariah. You have been selected to perform the incense offering. You also are chosen to serve with me. Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. 
He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. How can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now, and my wife is also well along in years. I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. And I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place. Because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. The evening blessing is being delayed. What is taking Zechariah so long to perform the incense offering? Zechariah has seen a vision. His voice has been taken away. Can you imagine it? So the people of Israel have gathered together outside the temple, and it is the special day where one of the priests will be chosen, one of the priests who's never done it before, to go into the Holy of Holies to offer incense before the Lord. This is a moment where um, the priest will place the incense on the altar, and it will bring up beautiful incense, um, like a, a bridge between us and God. Um, the people are still gathered outside. They are waiting and everything we have just seen happens within the context of this great gathering to see God at work. People come expectant to be blessed by God. I don't know if you've ever been in a gathering like that. That, for me, is why I go to New Wine. Um, there might be maybe other places that you've been to, Spring Harvest. Maybe it's to our encounter events um, once a month, which we've just started. Moments where you lay aside everything else. Sometimes there's a bit of a pilgrimage. There's a bit of a journey. At least New Wine, we're packing the, getting ready. We're packing the bags, and we're getting ready to go on this journey to go and meet with God. And there's something about the preparation in our hearts that's really important as we then approach Zachariah has been preparing for this moment all of his life, and he's now old. So that's where I'm going to pause the story. I wonder if I could have four volunteers. Um, come on up, Peter. Come on up, Harriet. Hi, Alex. We've got one more volunteer. Go. Oh, yes, Yasmina. That would be lovely. Come on up. Right, I've now got five of you, which is completely fine. Um, we're going to start left to right, and uh, it's, it's my uh, what's in the bag uh, trick, as usual. So, um, who would like to open my first bag? Yasmina. Can you take carefully out of my bag and show it to the church? Hold it up nice and high above your head. That's it. So, if you come over here, let's turn, turn the angel round. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and, and Yasmina, speaking to my microphone, what, what, what have you got in your hand? Angel Gabriel. An angel, could be Angel Gabriel. It certainly represents Angel Gabriel. So we can have the slides as we go, Carol, as these come up. Thank you. We have an angel, an encounter, an encounter with a, a message from God. In fact, a messenger from God. That's brilliant. Um, who, who wants to go next? Who wants to open my blue bag? So we've got Lily. Do you, Lily and Alex, do you want to do this together? Put your hands in. Put your hands in and bring out. Now, I'll be impressed if you know what one of these is. Is it a phone? It's a... Phone? A phone, it is. It's an old telephone. So I thought that would be helpful. So, um, uh, Lily, do you want to hold that next to Yasmina? That would be lovely. <coughs> so, we have a messenger from God, an angelic encounter, and... 
we have a calling to faithfulness. A calling to faithfulness. The angel says, you're going to have a child. And this child is going to save, he's going to prepare the way um, for the Messiah. Uh, through this child, many will come back to, um, to God and will know him. Um, you want the last one? Okay, wait, Peter, because that was our last one. Harriet, would you like to open um, this bag and hold up nice and high? What have you found? A baby. A baby. There is a promise of a child. So we have the encounter. We have the calling to faithfulness through um, uh, receiving this child. Um, it's amazing. Zachariah has been getting ready for this all of his life. And this is what, I mean, it's very rare to get an encounter of this sort in the temple. Um, and, and to know that calling so clearly, to receive the promise of a child. Wow. And then finally, Peter, can you come out to the front and show us the last bag? What is this? Wow. Thank you. If I can have the bag back. It's not just train track, though, Peter. What is it? It's a bridge, a bridge between heaven and earth. It's, um, it, let's just hold it still, Peter, that'd be fab, thank you. <laughs> um, like the incense going up to God, um, that connection between heaven and earth, that is part of the promise of what this child will be a part of, bringing people back to God. Of course, Zachariah is a priest. His role is to bring people back to God, um, both in teaching them, but also... Uh, particularly in the Old Testament, sacrificing at the temple um, l so that people could be set free from their sins. His role was to be um, someone who was part of this bridge between heaven and earth. Surely he would be ready for this message. The kids, do you remember what he, what he did? Was um, If the faithfulness to God was to receive this child and not to question it, what, what, do you remember what Zachariah did? Yasmina? Oh, he said, don't have alcohol. He did. Um, so that was part of the faithfulness. Don't let this child have faithfulness. What did Zachariah say? Do you remember? How can I believe you? Because we're very old. How can this be? Because we're old. Fantastic. Well done, Harriet. Uh, right, kids, can we put these on the, on the table so we can show them? And I'll let you go and take a seat while I just finish off sharing the message today. Thank you. So I haven't really worked that one out with the phone, but you know the phone's there. There is a baby and can we put the bridge there, Pet? Thank you. Peter likes being called Pet, so um, uh, his name, not mine. How does Zachariah react? It's with doubt and uncertainty. There's a link here. He's, an, he's a teacher of the law. Uh, he's, he's a priest within the, um, within the courts. And uh, he will have known the promises of Abraham. Abraham. Um, where Abraham before a, a night sky encounters God in an amazing way gets this brilliant covenant of faithfulness between the people of Israel and God um, wow and how was that going to be it was through um, his his wife who had never had children so they thought she couldn't have children they were both very old and the Lord promised a miracle and we know that Abraham stumbled. He wasn't completely faithful in receiving that, although he became faithful as it, as it went, as the, we progressed through the story. It's really interesting that here is another baby being promised. Does Zachariah wonder in that moment? This is just overwhelming. My wife has never had children. We're too old to have them now anyway. Um, and is he also thinking, is it, am I going to be the second Abraham? I haven't read about anything else like this in scripture. This is amazing. But how can it be? And he's got all of these questions running through his head. And that's his question, isn't it? How will this be? Uh, sorry. How can I be sure of this? How can I be sure of this? Um, uh, here we have two. I've compared them. We have two angelic visitations promising a child who will bring people back to God. One of them is preparing the way. Um, and that's John the Baptist who we're talking about today. One of them is going to be the Messiah, God himself on earth. And, uh, and so we have the angelic visitation in the temple of all places uh, with Zechariah. And that visitation of Gabriel, same angel in both places, in a mundane space uh, within her living, uh, her home um, with Mary. And the two different 
uh, responses from Zechariah. How can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well on in years. And for Mary, how will this be? Mary asks uh, the angel, since I am a virgin. On the face of it, two very similar accounts. And, and, and I was scratching my head and I have for many years sort of thought, but is that a bit harsh for Zechariah? But let's dig a bit deeper. Um, because he reveals himself in what he says. Instead of saying, how will this be? What are the mechanics of this? This is so amazing. How will this happen? Which is Mary's response. We have, how can I be sure of this? Can you prove it to me? Can, it, it, it's, throughout the Old Testament, we see lots of testing of God. Um, and uh, there's not always, they're not always made an example of, but in this case, um, uh, Gabriel is affronted. Zachariah hasn't been faithful to the call God has on his life um, in not just receiving this. He needs to just receive it and to go with it and to accept it. And instead, he came with doubt and questions. Now, the thing I love about this is God doesn't reject our doubting. It can set us back, but he goes with us on the journey. So let's just fast forward a little bit to the end of this chapter. Um, and we've, we then, in the middle, you see this amazing moment with Gabriel and, and, and Mary. And then um, a, a moment with um, Elizabeth and Mary where they meet each other. And then we get to the end of this part of the story uh, where John is born, the baby is born, and all the people say, name him Zachariah, name him Zachariah. And Zachariah says, no. In fact, he can't speak, can he? He's, he's lost his voice. The angel took it. And so he writes it down. His name will be John. And in that moment when he showed it to everyone, his name will be John. He was able to speak. He was able to be faithful. God hadn't done away with him just because he doubted. He went on that journey and he had an o another opportunity to be faithful. We see that in the story of Abraham and Sarah. We three see that in our own lives when we have said, I'm just not sure I'm the right person, God. And so God can't use us immediately in that place, um, but he goes on the journey and he takes us to that place. Uh, I was thinking through a number of parts of my own life where um, I've, I've, the Lord has asked me to do something um, and uh, and I've been uncertain. One of those, um, and I may have told you about it when I was in a, a field in Teze in France um, with 50 monks, uh, and they were leading us in a style of worship which was very alien to me, um, with three times of worship a day, with lots of silence, lots of repetitive singing, um, and lots of Bible being read in lots of different languages. I really struggled at the beginning of the week, and in the middle of the week, I felt God meet me in a brand new way. Uh, and, I, and that was when he called me to be uh, a minister in the Church of England. It was very specific. I didn't hear him in my head. I understood intuitively what he was saying, and I resisted. My dad was a Church of England vicar. I thought it was the worst job in the world. And I said, I, I, well, I had, I had this internal uh, sort of feeling that I wanted to say, no, I do not want to be a Church of England vicar. And it, I want to serve you, yes, but not in the Church of England of all places. Um, but I felt myself say, whatever you want, whatever you want, Lord. There was an internal wrestle. And actually that internal wrestle continued as I was discerning, as I was exploring, is this right for me? Um, I wonder about you. I wonder what God is saying to you. I wonder what you feel he said about you and your life and its direction. Um, God has plans and purposes for each and every one of us. Um, I've got a, a book that I highly recommend called Know Your Why. So if we could have that on the screen, please, Carol. That would be lovely. Know Your Why by Ken Costa. It's on the bookshelf. Um, I'd bought one a couple of years ago. That's been borrowed, so I've put another one on there. Uh, please do borrow from the Vicar's li um, Borrowing Library and then just bring them back maybe a month or two after you've read it. This one is fantastic in helping us work out with the Lord and, and ask the question to him, why did you create me? Um, what are you asking me to be faithful to? God. Sometimes we feel God really speak clearly, and other times it's not as clear. Um, some of you came last week to our encounter event, and uh, it was a beautiful place of listening to God in some actually pretty playful ways, around some tables at the back after some time of extended song worship. And it was wonderful hearing afterwards of how some people felt God had spoken for the first time. Some felt it was, um, they weren't, weren't exactly sure, but they were really 
they loved the fact they'd, they'd met with God and they'd heard something from him. Others felt very clearly they knew what was next. Two things the Lord calls us to do in sharing our story, um, and, and I believe this is part of what we do here in St. Mark's. Um, we've got Christmas cards. We've got amazing events coming up to help people hear the story. Um, hear something of the story of Jesus. The gospel message will be preached at every single one of these services and at our mission events yesterday and next week. Um, they will be offered different ways of accessing the good news um, rather than a message from the front. So please do give these to friends and pray about which friend you're inviting to one of these. There's such a, an array of services. Um, I'm sure there'll be one that a friend would come to. And then we are also relaunching Alpha. Uh, we wanted to do this after the Christmas period as an opportunity to um, give people space immediately to respond. Do you know I'll take one of these? And what we've done is we've created it on the other side. There are all of our midweek activities. Um, so this is hopefully a really helpful invitational tool to get it into someone's hand. What I'd love us to do is just to spend um, a moment in quiet and then Kay will lead us in our final prayers. Um, in fact, no, I'm leading that, I think. So, uh, but Kay's beautifully set it up for us. What I'd love us to do is just to take some moment, maybe with the band playing gently, um, just to pray, Lord, who, what, are you, what are you calling me? What's the faithfulness you're calling me to? Maybe it's to invite someone to Alpha or to one of our midweek things or to one of our services. Um, maybe it's something bigger for your life. Let's just spend a moment of quiet with the band playing and then I'll, while they continue to play, I'll introduce our next prayer activity. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you speak to us, that you meet with us, and we pray in this space, would we encounter you? How are you calling me to be faithful today? Jesus in faithfulness to you we offer ourselves we pray would you guide us into all those places you want us to go help us step into the places you're blessing Jesus help us to pray for those who we know who are ill faithfully and Lord I want to particularly pray for baby Vanessa um, McKee rushed into hospital this morning um, in the early hours uh, with a heart concerns around her heart. Jesus, we pray, whatever that is, we pray there would be healing over her little body. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen Johnny and Sandra. Um, and Lord, we pray we would be faithful in serving those you're calling us to. And if there are others you want to lay on our minds now, to go and see, to visit, to call, to give, to share. Would you bring them to mind? What I'd love you to do is to, in response, come to the front to take one of these very different shaped crosses. Each of them is different, or most of them are different. You could spend a moment, if there's not too much of a key, in finding one that you think, yeah, that represents me. I'd like you to then turn it over and peel off one side of the sticky back um, tape, and then to come over to the table where Kay is, place it on the table um, as a, an act of taking our faithfulness and saying, I will take my cross 
and follow you. I will pick up my cross and follow you. We'll do this as the band gently play and then they will lead us into our final song worship.
song today is actually Mary's response. A woman who was able to just say, yes, let it be as you say. Let that be us today.
Jesus, we thank you for what you have done among us. We thank you that you speak to us, that you promise things to us, that you have plans and purposes for each and every one of us. And Lord, we thank you that you call us to faithfulness. And when we fail, you give us a way to repent, to turn back to you, and to continue that story with you. So Jesus, help us to be faithful this week in all you are leading us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Before the final blessing, uh, obviously we've got tea and coffee, so please do enjoy. Um, we, if we could have all the chairs put to the sides, that would really help us, because we've got our smarty party this week, which is going to be wonderful. So, um, And pray for a number of us in schools doing nativity plays with some of the kids um, and other ways that we're in, engaging in our schools this week. Could we have the final blessing, please, Carol? And that's it, wonderful, thank you. Let's pray. Loving Father, we pray that you would always be knowing Jesus, loving each other and caring for our community. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. God bless.